Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome back to Wood by Wright number two. Today we are making a new tote, but a lot of people have shown how to make a tote with a lathe, you just spin it and it's done. But today I wanna make a new tote without a lathe. How do you make this match that without a lathe? Let's dive in and take a look at this. Now, before we get going, this is a Stanley number 10 and a quarter. Uh, it is a 10 because it is a jackrabbit, but it's a quarter because the knobs actually will slide side to side, and this will allow you to get into a corner and the knob is still up here, as well as the tote in the back would also do that. We don't have the tote right now. This is actually a friend's and I'm doing this for him. He's supplying the zebra wood and I'm gonna make the knob and the tote. Today, we're just gonna be focusing on making the knob without a lathe, but this is kind of fun. It adds an extra thing. It's not just bolted on, but it also has to be able to swivel side to side. So you have to make it match the plane. So let's dive in and take a look at this. I'm not quite sure why I've had an influx of questions recently about how to create a knob for a plane. It is a very simple thing, and especially if you have a lathe, you can whip one of them out in just a few minutes. But a lot of people out there do not have a lathe, and the question is how do you actually make these without a lathe? So let's do a video on that, because I do have a couple lathes, but uh, let's do it for fun and uh, just because I want to. So first thing I want to do is I have the original one, and I want to measure it and get the exact sizes off of it. Now, it is much easier if you have one to compare it to. So if you have a knob that you like, and knobs come in all different shapes and sizes, there is no right or wrong, unless you're looking for something specifically historical, in which case then there's resources for that online. And I'm just going off and matching what was originally on there. So if I were to do it for myself, I'd actually want a shorter, more squat knob, as I like that feeling. But uh, for this one, we're going to be matching what is on there. So I have this block that is longer, that is longer so that I have something to hold on to. It makes it much easier than cutting it to the correct length and then working with it so making it longer makes it easier to work with I want to drill a circle I want to draw a circle on either end that is the maximum diameter and then I'm just going to plane it down to those lines I'm gonna be using a scrub plane mostly to take off a lot of material and get close to it and then I'm gonna come in with a finer plane which is what I have here and I'm just going to round everything over until I get a roughly cylindrical shape that is slightly larger than I need it's probably about a sixteenth to an eighth inch wider in diameter and then I want to come in and take out the exact measurements on this because I really want to match this one as closely as possible. So I'm going to measure in the depth of the smallest collar and know where I need to put that in the ring. And putting a piece of tape on the saw allows me to cut down to that depth. So then I can, I can check it with the calipers that I had set out and I can cut around the ring down to the depth of the blue tape. Or in this case, I'm gonna cut ever so slightly short just in case I uh, um, run into it too long, I'd rather cut too little. And then with a regular bench chisel bevel down, we can chop back into it. Now I'm, I'm gonna be doing mostly this with the rasp work, but chopping in with the chisel removes a lot of material very quickly and very easily and in this case it makes it easier to get in with the file the next thing I want to do is cut in the dimension of the lower ring so that is smaller than the dimension of the top um, bubble <laughs> and for this it's easier to come in and file it out I did try chopping with the chisel and that works really well um, but with the rasp it actually goes really quickly because you're going across the grain and so you can you can chop down through this rather rapidly and get a, a nice clean smooth surface so you'll see me come in with the rasp and then I'll switch to a finer file and get it a little bit smoother and get a little bit closer uh, I, I got it to right where I thought it was supposed to be and then I came back and measured it and realized, oh, no, I actually need to take off about another eighth inch. So I cleaned it down a little farther and then I have this file that is uh, it's square and but it has a large face on the other side. So this allows me to do the shoulder as well as the main face. And once I get that down to the diameter and really, really close to where I want, I'm going to tape it off. This makes it far easier to see, uh, yeah, don't file where the tape is at. And now we're going to start filing in the, uh, the neck and I'm going to use a small rat tail and take this rat tail down to the depth and I'll occasionally check it with the calipers and bring it down until it's the right size. And I'm just going to work around this in a circular fashion rotating the piece until I get an even amount all the way around and then I'm going to come in with a larger rat, rat file and clean that out. Here you can see I put a little bit of tape on uh, this particular file and that makes it a semi-safe edge because um, I didn't want to file as much on the, on the, the button side there. Um, and so sometimes you can do that. It will still gar a little bit, but not that much. Um, the tape does wear out, but it does make it nice if you're just doing a little bit here and there and you just want to be careful on it. Now we can work on the, the top of the knob. And again, we're just going to use the rasp and take the material down. Um, I could come in with a chisel and chop it out, uh, but the, the rasp is, is a really quick item. 
Um, the, the, the entire time on this uh, filing and everything was under an hour. Um, so it's a, it's a relatively quick process from, from block to finished product. So uh, although this makes it look like it's a lot of tedious work, it's really not that much. Once we get it into a rough shape, I'm going to be then comparing it with the original knob and seeing where is it lumpy, where is it lopsided, where do I need to take off a little bit more material and get it close to the shape. And as I do this, I'm going to be going down to a finer and finer and finer file. And I will be bringing in a bow sander. And I have a video on making this as well as this one was made by a friend of mine, um, Pale Dog Tool Company. And uh, I, I keep this one with a 50 grit sandpaper. This is basically a, a fine rasp. <laughs> and I'll use that to do a lot of the, the rounding work. And the nice thing about it being a bow sander is it will go around the curve easier and you end up with less flat spots. And it's much faster than using a, a foam sanding block. The, the bow sander just does an amazing job with, with organic curves and really cleaning things out. The other thing it does is it shows up a lot of the spots where I still need to work or there are scratches because the scratches fill up with the sawdust. And then I can come back in with a fine file and remove those scratches because the file is very good at removing deep scratches. And I'll clean them out with a file and then I'll go to a finer sandpaper and check again. And I'll find more scratches and I'll go back and forth between the file and the sandpaper until I get it to where I want it. And usually the last thing to touch it is the file, uh, though in some cases I'm going to end it with like a 400 grit sandpaper. I think most of this ended up with about a 400 grit sandpaper on there. So you can get, see it's, it's really close to the original shape. Now the only problem is we need to drill a hole through this and uh, this really gets scary for a lot of people. And oops, yeah, don't, don't stab yourself. <laughs> but uh, you know, don't overthink it. Now if I had a drill press, I may end up drilling the hole first, um, putting it in a hand screw clamp and then drilling the hole out on it. Um, but in this case, I really prefer to, to shape it first and then drill a hole afterwards. And it's really not that hard. I'm going to drill halfway through from one side, and then I'm going to pull the bit out and then flip it over and drill halfway from the other side. And I'll end up with a, with a nice reamed hole that, uh, even if it's off slightly in the middle, it's not a problem because this is a quarter inch bit that I can then run all the way through. Now, the last thing on this particular knob is we need to have a rounded section that holds onto the body of the plane. And I was originally planning on just carving this out, but I found it actually goes really, really fast with the set of files. So I, I went in with a small rat tail and created the line across with the rat tail, and then came in with my large rat tail, which was really, really close to the uh, radius that it needed. It just needed to be a little bit wider than the rat tail would do. So I can occasionally pop it out and check it. Um, I needed to make sure that the, the groove I went was deep enough, and so I can use the depth finder, just make sure I go down just as much as I did on the original. And so I'm gonna use the fine rat tail and take it down until it's at its actual depth. And then I'm gonna come back in with the large rat tail and ream it out and get it close to the radius that I need it to be. And this got it really, really, really close, um, but I just need to do a little bit more. So we'll sharpen up the gouges and then just clean it up a little bit. Uh, and this is, this is a lot of fun because uh, this zebra wood is, in some ways it's a pain. It's a very stringy wood. It's, it's very similar to oak, um, a little less voids, but uh, very, very similar feel, uh, just a little bit harder. And uh, getting that glossy, smooth surface right off of the chisel cut and these beautiful little curls, this was just so much fun. So I can get that really close and then check it on the plane, make sure that everything's on there. And we basically have a knob. Um, we just need to fiddle it in and make sure that everything's working. So I'm gonna put the screw in there and actually do the test work, make sure that it all comes together. And then I can do the, the final preparations and compare it one way or the other, see if there's any gap that needs to be taken out, make sure that the screw is the right length. Um, as long as your measurement from top to bottom matched the original one, then your screw works. If the screw is a little too long, you can file it back. If the screw is a little too short, well then you can change the height of your knob by taking out a little bit more on the inside. And then I'm just gonna come through with a file and I think I ended up with like a 600 grit sandpaper, um, just detailing the whole thing down and making it feel really, really nice. Um, all those little bits in the end, holding it in my hand, rubbing it around and knowing exactly how it felt. That, that's the important thing about the knob is that it feels good. And then the boiled linseed oil. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I love boiled linseed oil and zebra wood. It just, the chatoyancy in the wood just pops out. The, the deeper tones in the end grain, the lighter tones in the, 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 the cross grain area, the, the coloring on this is, is phenomenal. And the more the boiled linseed oil soaked in, the more it just got really, really creamy. 
Now, usually I'm just going to finish them off with boiled linseed oil and paste wax, but in this case, uh, I really wanted to keep the white color on the knob. And eventually with your hand oil, that works into the wood and it's going to turn darker. So there'd be less contrast between the light and dark wood on this. So to keep it that way, I'm actually gonna go with a traditional finish of shellac. I put the boiled linseed oil on there to provide the color. Um, and it really brings that out. And then I can put on a, uh, a clear shellac and I end up with five coats. So I'll put on two coats and then I'm gonna come in with 400 grit sandpaper and smooth that down, just a light brush over anything that's, that's bumpy on there. And then I'm gonna put two more coats on it and then come back in and sand it again and hang it up. And I actually like to hang them on the, the ceiling. Uh, it keeps them away from any dust that might be happening down by the bench. And uh, it works really well for something like this because I can just put a zip tie through and, and clamp it down. And so I've done four coats and sanded it down and then polished it. And then we can put on the last coat. And after that last coat has come on, I'm just gonna buff it down with, a, with an open rag. Uh, some people actually use a, a brown paper bag. It works really well to buff and shine up the, the shellac. And then I'm gonna add some paste wax with a steel wool. And this will just work the paste wax into the, the knob and the, the shellac finish. I'll let, me, I'll let that sit on there until the wax hardens up and cures and all of the volatiles have come out of it. And then we can take it back to the rag and polish it up and bring it to that high shine. And that's one of the things I love about shellac is if you do it right, you get this beautiful finish on there. You can almost see yourself in it and it feels very good in the hand. It still feels a little bit plastically in comparison to boiled lens oil, but it has a phenomenal work. So the last thing is put it in place, test it out and have a little bit of fun. And I'm really looking forward to making the matching tote for this because this is absolutely gorgeous. I might have to put zebra wood on some more of my planes. Oh, I am, I'm really, really happy with how this one came out. There you go, um, a knob made without a lathe, and I love this game. With the, with the zebra wood, this is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm looking forward to having a matching tote on here. Hopefully that will be in a week or two. I just have to get a few things to figure out exactly what it is. I'm also missing the screw for it, so hopefully we'll get that in here soon. Anytime you come to a project and you're like, mm, I don't have that tool, just realize that every tool out there is just a jig for a chisel. And if you figure out how to use that chisel better, or in this case, a file, you can make just about anything. It's just a little bit of handwork and taking your time and taking it right, and you can actually make some really interesting things look pretty much like new, other than being zebra wood. <laughs> so I hope you like this project. This is a fun one, and I, I love actually playing with this, just kind of experimenting and, and trying something a little bit different. And, and this is absolutely looking gorgeous. I'm looking forward to having the tote on here. Yeah, I hope you like it too. If you did like it, please let me know down below, and if you have any questions or ideas, thoughts, let me know down there. If you'd like to see the artistic video where I do all this without talking, you can go over to Wood by Right, where I have the, the regular videos. I'm gonna be moving most of the talking videos over here. Uh, so if that's what you like, then stay tuned. We're gonna be doing a lot more of that in the future here. So if you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. That really helps us out, and thank you for that. I think that's about it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Okay, let us pull out the dad joke book, and let's do, uh, did I ever tell you about the time I had a job smashing cans? It was so depressing. <laughs>